Well, hello. Chicken tenders are one of those things that kids love, adults love, but what do they need to be? They need to be crispy, they need to be delicious, crunchy, but you don't always want a deep fat fry, right? So that's what these are, baked, crispy chicken tenders, which I love. So they're pretty much like a chicken finger, a chicken strip. We're actually gonna make our own, which truly is a chicken strip as opposed to a tender. But this has great ingredients, things you'll probably have at home. They're extra crispy to make them kids friendly because kids love that crispy, crunchy texture, but they're slightly elevated so adults will love them just the same. That's what it's all about. And who doesn't love a great piece of chicken with a little bit of a coating? You could use it on a salad, you could do whatever you want, or a great dipping sauce like we will. So to start, I have, you can see the beginnings of chicken strips. Now, true chicken tenders come in the form of this little piece on usually the back of a breast. Now, you can find these in a grocery store and get lots of chicken tenders, or if you wanna make it even easier, you can go and just cut your own strips, which are not truly chicken tenders. But if you try to make just even strips, everyone will be happy, and guess what? They're still just as good. You know, the thing is, you gotta work with what you have, and while chicken tenders can be easy to find, I also find that chicken breast is always easy to find and you're for sure easily gonna have it, maybe even in your freezer currently. So I have all my strips here ready to go. Now what we're gonna worry about is really the process of the coating, making sure it's crunchy, making sure it sticks. But to do that, I need to wash my hands first. We're gonna crunch up some cereal. Yeah, the crispiness is gonna come and you'll see why. And then we'll get going. So when you're going to bread, some type of chicken or some type of meat. Usually do it in a three-step process. So I'm gonna have three pie dishes because something low and flat just works well. You can see it even has my W on the back. You know when you take a pie somewhere to a function and you need to make sure you get your Pyrex back, just like Tupperware, you gotta label it. But I have three different ones here and what we're gonna do is have one be the beginning, the dry, so a little bit of flour mixture. One's gonna be the wet, which will be our buttermilk and egg. And one will be what helps us get that crispy exterior that we want. And to do that, we're gonna start with some cereal. So I think cereal is honestly one of the best ways. You could use a panko breadcrumb, sure. But what I like is corn check cereal or a rice checks. What it really does is have the ability to make this great crispy exterior that I think is extra crispy. It's one that picks up flavors otherwise because it doesn't have a lot of flavor itself, which I like. And I think it browns beautifully, it works beautifully. I just really like it. And so that's what we're gonna use. And it's really easy to chop up as you can see. I'm just using a rolling pin and a bag. Have it all kind of crushed up already into smallish pieces. You want it fairly fine because I want it to coat. Now, what we're gonna do is just take this and put this in one section here. So we're gonna put it right out here. I might have done just a little bit extra, so we're gonna leave it at about like that. And then we're gonna start getting the assembly ready for all of our other things too. So in the first one, we need to do something that's gonna dry off the outside of the chicken. Something that's just gonna kind of soak up and cling to it, and that's gonna be some flour. So we're gonna start with some flour, and this is gonna be our first, I would say, defense, in the sense, and you'll see what I mean here. We're gonna add some flour in, and this is gonna be a little bit different that we're gonna lighten the flour just slightly, by going with a little bit of cornstarch. Again, the cornstarch also has the ability to really dry out, which I like, and help things stick to it. So we're gonna put that right there. But then we're gonna make sure we up the flavor here. So we're gonna start with some garlic powder. This is where your dried things really come in handy. So we're gonna add garlic powder. That's that first line of flavor punch that's gonna be close to the meat itself, and that's why we're making sure to do that. We're gonna add onion powder, you guessed it. You know, these are those ones that, they're, they're a staple. They're a staple in our pantry because they work, you know, they work. We're gonna add a little bit of cayenne pepper. Now, if for full kid friendly, if you don't have adventurous kids, you add no cayenne pepper. I have kids in my life when I have friends and all that that actually enjoy some spice and I don't make it too spicy. So then we're gonna add just a little bit if you want to of smoked paprika. That to me has the ability to really up the flavor, add a little bit more of a nuance, make it seem a little bit more special. Then we're gonna get our salt. Salt's super important. Don't even get on me about salt. This is kosher salt, but we're gonna add some right in there. That's what we really need to kick it up. So now we're gonna take a whisk, a fork, your hand. We're just gonna stir that together. We're gonna make sure to get it all mixed together because we want those spices to evenly be in all of our dry ingredients. So see how you can see the color working in? This is wonderful. And this is what's really gonna just smell it. You can smell it, you smell all that goodness. That's what you want. What we're gonna do next is our wet. So for our wet, we're gonna do an egg. We know egg, we know, welcome friend, egg. But egg is a binder. It really is gonna help things 
stick to it, help it coat it. But also what we're gonna do with that egg is some buttermilk, chicken, buttermilk. You understand where I'm going with that. And we're gonna add in the buttermilk. And what I wanna do is now just again, whisk, break up that yolk. And what we wanna do is just whisk this together. So you wanna make sure to really whisk it in because you don't want that egg to have little chunks of egg that cling to certain parts of the chicken or the white or whatever it is. So you really wanna make sure you're getting in there and whisking it well because you don't want you know, pieces of egg to actually cook on and you notice it when it's done. So this step is very important to make sure you're whisking it well. Once that is whisked together, and you can see it gets kind of thick. Look at that. This to me is exciting because I think we often, we relegate these things to be only something you can get in a restaurant. Or we often say kids only like what comes in the frozen section. No, we can make it at home and it can be good. So what we have here is that cereal and now we're gonna take some parm some real Parmesan, and what I wanna do is make sure I get some nice bits, and I'm just grating it right over it, you can see that. But what Parmesan does is one, it's a drier cheese, so it doesn't just melt on, it gets more crispy, which is what we want, and Parmesan has the ability to be like a seasoning, I always say this. Parmesan really honestly is like a seasoning because it has that salty, funky, <sighs> it's just good. And what we do when we put it on a crust like this is, it helps with the kind of exterior coating to get a little bit more crusty, a little bit more crispy, but also full of flavor. And I think that's the important thing here is every step of the way, just like buttermilk and the wet ingredients, every step we're adding flavor. So we're gonna have that there. We're gonna mix it in. Just make sure you kind of evenly put that in. So when we put the chicken in, we kind of get that coating on. Then what I have is a parchment line baking sheet and a rack. So this is an important step in what's gonna help this be a crispy exterior on the chicken on all sides. Because what happens is when we bake it, sometimes what lays flat on the pan, it's gonna get steamed and wet and be soggy, which is sad. Instead what we're gonna do is, the first step is to elevate it with a rack so the air can move all around it. Step two, if you happen to have a convection oven, this is the time where I think they are wonderful. A convection oven is honestly a large air fryer. Yeah, it's an air fryer pretty much. It circulates the hot air around something, helps you able to fry something without oil. So what we're gonna do is start with chicken strip. We're gonna coat it in this drying mixture. See how it just instantly is clinging? And you're getting just a very thin coating and you wanna knock off anything that isn't thin. Just knock that off. Then we're gonna put it in the wet. We're gonna turn it. Now you can see at the moment I have one hand that I'm kind of in the dry and then the wet. Now we're going to lift this up, let it drip off any of the excess and lay it right into there. I'm gonna take my other hand and I'm going to make sure this outside coating really sticks to it. And what you can see is you can turn it, make sure it sticks. You want the cheese, you want the cereal, which you won't know cereal when you're done. And look at that. Then you have this beautiful, and it's a hefty one, but it's a good looking chicken strip. So then we're gonna lay it on this and now I'm gonna keep getting dirty. I'm gonna keep this process of going through with the flour, with the wet, within the cereal, and put them on there, line them up, and then we'll put them in the oven. So you can see I picked larger tenders. Now you could cut these and make them smaller if you wanted to. It's really a make your own feast here and whatever works for you. But look at that coating they have on it. We're gonna put them in the oven now. Like I said, I'm gonna use the convection. If you happen to have a convection or an air fryer, this is perfect for that. If not, they're still gonna be crispy in a traditional oven setting, don't worry. So we're gonna put these in, let them go, and then I'm gonna clean up a bit. And while they're roasting or finishing up, we're gonna make a honey mustard because why not? Okay, you can see why these are delicious to make. Look at that and do, do you hear that? That crispy, beautiful texture, that's what you want. You want that, and so these are just taken out and they're gonna cool slightly while we make a honey mustard aioli. Now, I will say, I always check the temperature of anything. Check the temperature to make sure they're done. Then you don't have a question. Don't just go by touch and feel, T take the temperature. So for a honey mustard, you could just mix honey and mustard. Boring, delicious, but you could elevate it too. So I'm gonna make a quick aioli, which for me, I always use one whole egg. Now, if you haven't made an aioli, 
it's pretty much a mayonnaise that's must that is just flavored honestly so i am starting with a whole egg and you can use a pasteurized egg you can actually buy these and have them be completely pasteurized now what i'm going to do to that is just a couple things here i want to put in one whole garlic clove and i'm just going to cut off the end of it now we're going to blend this so i just take the back of my hand smash it when i smash it it just comes off really easily that husk so you know you know i have seen people we see those tips, those tricks where you put it into a little jar and you shake it or in between two bowls and shake it. Just smash it and throw it in. I just find that to be easiest. Now I'm going to add some mustard. Now this is honey mustard aioli. So we want it to be heavy on the mustard. This isn't going to be traditional. We're adding pretty much the parts that we would if we were going to make it a just true mustard with honey. So we're adding copious amount of mustard there. Believe me though, it's worth it. And I'm doing a Dijon mustard because to me, it should speak for itself. It's Dijon mustard, I love it. We're gonna a little bit of salt, not too much, but enough to just slightly season it. And okay, I used it once, I'm gonna use a little bit again. A little bit, just a little bit of that smoked paprika. A little bit goes a long way. What it is, there's no spice to it. It has a smokiness. Like, believe me, it's delicious, it's good. I'm gonna add a little bit of apple cider vinegar. I always do a raw one, and it's an acidity that just kind of ups the ante. So we're gonna put that in there. We're going to blend this up and get it going. Then we'll add the honey, we'll add the oil. It's going to be delicious. I'm excited and I want to try these. So I like to just get those first few ingredients just chopped up, get them going, nothing special. Then we're going to throw in the honey or pour it in. Now, if you use a raw honey like I do, sometimes it gets cloudy. That's just because it's raw. You might have to heat it slightly in some warm water just to make sure to get it all in there, but no problem. So we have all the honey in there. Yeah, now comes the fun part. We're going to blend this up and we're going to add some oil like we would to make a mayonnaise pretty much. So I'm going to blend it and be adding oil till it thickens. So you can see what happens is you get this thickened sauce that has mayonnaise qualities, it has honey mustard qualities. It's honestly like an in-between, just delicious thing. So what I like is it's thicker, but not so thick. You can still pour it, which I like. But it's a nice, look at that consistency, it's beautiful. And this is our honey mustard sauce that, believe me, is delicious. So now we have the sauce. We have this beautiful chicken. We happen to have a nice little piece here that had fallen off of one that I can just use. And this is the best part. Look how crispy and how well that exterior holds onto it. Like, look at that. And it's beautiful. So I'm gonna take it. I wanna try it. I, I have to. It's just part of the job. Mm. I really hope you hear that crunch because it's delicious. What I love about it is you get the crunch. That's great. You get some Parmesan. That's even better. But then you actually get some flavor. Remember when we put in that smoked paprika, the onion powder, the garlic powder, the salt, the seasoning, and that flour coating? That was important, and it gave this actual flavor. So this chicken has even more flavor than just a random run-of-the-mill chicken, and it's great whole chicken breast pieces, and that's what I love. Let alone this dipping sauce, I mean, hello. So what do I hope you do with this? I hope you share this video around, because of course, it helps me so much when you share these videos. It helps other people find me, but it helps other people find good food that they can make at home. Forget about buying the processed stuff. You can make this, your kids will love it, you will love it. Think of the uses for this. It's endless. Check my website, wiseguide.com, for this recipe and all my other recipes. They're all on there. Have some fun with it. Until next time, enjoy some good food. You'll be happy.